Hi everyone, this is Rachel and I'm here for another episode of Lift and Sketch with Christine and Rachel. We are back to our regularly scheduled program where we do one lift and one sketch each month. We had slowed it down, Christy had a baby, and then she was involved with a bunch of design team stuff and she's uh, starting up uh, managing the Facebook group for the Secret Not the Secret Not Secret Kit Club that Christina Sorge is running. Um, <laughs> I'll get that correct at some point some in time in my life. Um, basically, it's it's another type of curated kit club. So anyway, she's running, she's helping to run the Facebook group for that. So she's involved a lot. So we kind of slowed down just for a little bit. But now we're going back to doing a lift and sketch each month. And Christy picked this lovely, lovely sketch by Paige Evans. It's beautiful. It is so... Paige Evans, you know, it looks like a quilt and there's tons of color and there's a smaller photo and it just absolutely screams Paige Evans and it's beautiful and I love Paige Evans's work. I love her lines. I own all of her lines um, and I tend to buy more of them of their her line than I buy of other people's lines. So <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh, you know what? Looking at it, I'm like, you know, I think I'm going to have to go using her line because her patterns just work so well together. And I think, you know what I have? I have the 6 by 6 paper pad for Fancy Free, so maybe I'll use that line. And then in thinking about it, I was thinking, unless I want to do an exact duplicate of her layout, I want to do something different than the heart. So I was thinking about it and thinking about, you know, I have the only full size papers I have left in Fancy Free are the ones with the circles. Come on. Come on. Now, obviously, I could do it on a, a white piece of cardstock and, but all of, Paige Evans to me is almost always all about color and lots of patterns and mixing of patterns and stuff like that. So the only full size sheet I have are these circles where there's words on one side and then patterns on the other. And I have two of them because when I bought it, I was like, well, what if, you know, the one pattern I want has the one word I want because I'm crazy like that. But obviously this isn't going to work as a background. So while I was you know, thinking about that, I thought, oh, you know what? I bet there's something in one of my Felicity Jane paper packs that would work well with this line. So I went through and I found from the summer line, this one called, it's from the summer line. I guess it doesn't have actual name because they are all from summer. So, but it's this, a zigzag rainbow ombre and I thought that would go nicely with a bunch of the patterns now this is my photo and yes it is crazy bright but I really love it and I thought it would work and what's really funny is in looking at pages layout her title is Wonderful Day, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it would be so much fun if my title were Parachute Play, you know, so it's kind of indicative of her title, and then I I went and grabbed my plastic bag, Oh Fancy Free, and her line came with these word thickers, and the only word I have left is this silver play, and I went, okay, it's totally fate that I use this for that title for this layout. I don't, like, I was literally, like, I almost swallowed my tongue. I was like, oh my god, what are the odds, really, that the word play, and I, and I, I promise you, I thought of using that title before I looked at this, and I haven't looked at Fancy Free for a little bit now, so, um, you know, I was, I was just, like, gobsmacked. I was like, I cannot believe that. Um, anyway, so my idea was instead of doing a heart would be to do kind of like, uh, use different pattern papers and make a sun 
because I hers are quilt inspired a lot of the times and when I looked at I looked at first at being able to use these circular patterns in like kind of a quilt shape but in looking on uh, images and finding circle quilts I didn't really like anything the one thing I could have done is the one where you like score the corners and fold them over but it's not a look I love I love the look on other people's pages it's just not a look I love for myself so I'm thinking I like the Sun idea it's circular like the parachute is circular uh, it'll be indicative of, of that because it'll have the triangle pieces so I think that's what I'm going to go with so I'm gonna go ahead get you guys on fast forward and start the process don't forget to check out Christie's take on this video. I'm sure it will be amazing and completely different than mine, which is always hilarious because we start off with the same inspiration piece, but we always take it in two completely different directions. All right, folks, let's you get going on fast tour. Just remember the volumes can change a bit. So let's get going. All right, so <clears throat> first things first, I have to actually take all of my stuff out and I have to reorganize my embellishments get those all out of the little plastic dvd sleeves i keep them in uh when the especially when the die cuts come in a clamshell pack i take them out and put them in the little D dvd sleeves i use as my organizational for small items simply because that way uh, i keep my collection packs in giant ziplocky style bags so now i'm just pulling out the pieces of six by six paper pad pieces i have left and making a final decision on what size i want them to be and i decide to make two by three rectangles and then i just make a little mark halfway through so at the one inch mark and then use my little trimmer to cut from the corner down to the center and i'm going to do this a couple times on camera and then i'm just going to fade away simply because you know, seeing me do this 16 times is a little silly. So as I said, uh, a two by three, and then mark it in the middle, and then trim it from the bottom corner to the center of the top. And this actually worked out quite well. Here I am, and I have it. I am showing you, I am using one larger piece of paper, and I'm just going, I just kind of cut a piece out. That Now I'm going to go ahead and trim down to two by three, and then once again, mark it in the middle this one being a double sided paper so there is a pattern in the back I'm going to be using that front side with that ombre watercolor of aqua moving back to my two by three and skipping ahead to when I finish up my last piece I did go end up using the little tiny squares I thought it would look cute and it does so yay me so now I'm getting down uh, trying to see I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to do one layer or two layers and I decide pretty quickly that I really would like the two layers I definitely think you need that emphasis on the design it just gives an extra oomph to it so I'm going to be going back to real time so here we go to come back to you live I finished I decided I don't know if you saw but I decided to do a double layer so my plan is to do the first layer flat on the ground on the ground on the background page then to gesso over it and do some mixed media because apparently I haven't made this hard enough with all the cutting of pieces and putting them together I feel I need to add some mixed media to this <laughs> now what's hilarious is the reason I've got so many little pieces of this six by six paper pad is the last time I used this line I did it to cut out like about 50 little fishtail flags um, to do a big ring of flags so it's actually pretty similar to the layout I'm doing now because apparently using Paige Evans's stuff makes me go insane. But this is hilarious. This is all I have left of a six by six paper pad. I've only ever finished one other one in my entire scrapbooking career hobby thingy. 
So I have two six by six paper pads and I took the other sheet of these and turned them all into flare with my friend's flare making machine. They're all right here. Well, not all of them. I've used some of them, quite a few of them actually. But so I turned a whole bunch of them into flare. So I don't know what I'm going to do with those. And then all I have left in paper are, as I said, the two circle ones, this dark blue one, and then the other half of this one. So I think I've actually uh, done a fairly good job at actually using the Fancy Free Line. Now I bought all of it. Like I bought every single piece of the Fancy Free Line. So I am uh, definitely not concerned that I got my money's worth. I am quite sure that I did. All right, folks, now that I've kind of talked, figured out what I'm going to do, I need to do math so I can get this correct. I don't particularly like math, but I think I need to do it in order to get this properly set up. But I think it's going to look pretty good. I'm looking forward to it. I might come back to you guys live again. So if I do... I uh, will chat with you later. All right, I'm gonna get you back on fast forward. Okay, so I clear off my paper because I need to, as I said, do a little math. <clears throat> First thing I'm going to do is pull off, as a uh, trim off my branding strip. Now. I start laying things, first I'm going to decide which direction do I actually want all this stuff. And I decide to go with the blue to pink to yellow. And I'm laying my first layer down. And I don't remember if this is actually my first layer or if I end up having this be my top layer. I don't remember. I only, you know, just worked on it. Plus I just watched it. So, oy vey me. So, I'm thinking about how best to do this. And I decide the best thing to do. Uh, first thing is I'm going to mark basically just so it where the center of my page is and then in both directions so the center going horizontally and then the center going vertically and i'm just going to make those marks behind where my top layer will be just so i have an idea of where my bottom layer should go so once i get that i know where my center is i'm not going to mark that because that's going to be open space so I finally clue in that probably the easiest way to do it is to be able to put the top layer on something. And I realize these handy dandy DVD squares will actually come in really well here because they're just about the size I need for them to be in order to uh, line these up. So I'm just going to put what will end up being my top layer on this DVD square and I'm using my Stampin' Up! dimensionals at first forgetting I have an entire roll of scotch adhesive that I can use instead. So I'm going to be using a mix of those and I'm just using the squares on my grid which are inch mark squares to make sure I'm getting them at the six inch mark. It just makes my life a little easier. So it actually did not turn out as mentally strenuous as I was afraid it would. So I am getting them all lined up, <clears throat> excuse me, and that dark blue piece of paper is much different color than the other ones. So I want to make sure I have one both in the bottom and the top layer, and that way it spreads the color out so it's not just one piece of dark blue paper. And as I mentioned, I think I mentioned, I don't, I'm not quite sure now, I'm using my Stampin' Up! Dimensionals. I'm also going to use my Scotch roll of foam tape, but at this moment I have forgotten that I have that so I'm just using the Stampin' Up! dimensionals. So I'm making sure to spread out the patterns. I'm sorry, I'm, I had a little uh, sound snafu so I don't remember whether or not I've said specific things or not so I apologize if I'm repeating myself. Now that one keeps falling off and I realize oh yeah it's because you never took the other side of the sticker thingy off. Hello! <laughs> All right, once I get this down and I'm excited, I'm like, yay, I did it. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start working on my bottom layer and I'm going to ink up the edges of all of my papers. I am going to skip ahead for this portion because I know you guys know how to ink up the edges of your papers. So <laughs> I'm not um, uh, just counting how many spots I have to how many papers I need. So they are magically all inked now and I am moving on to taping them all down. 
and I'm just using my ATG for this part and I'm just getting my top layers centered and then I'm just going to uh, go ahead and put down what my base layer triangles in between the spots. Once this is done, I will remove the top layers and kind of just uh, fuss with them just so they are at the correct angles. I'm not really concerned that they be perfect. I just want them to be, you know, good. And I'm doing the same thing at the top with the bottom layer that I did with the top in making sure the patterns aren't, there aren't two pinks right next to each other. There aren't two multicolors super close. If I'm using a pattern on the bottom layer, I want to make sure it's not right next to the same pattern on the top layer. So I'm just, you know, spreading out, spreading out the pattern magic. <laughs> so once I get this last one down, as I said, I'm just going to zhuzh it a little bit, make sure they're at the correct angles. Now I am going to come back to you in real time. <clears throat> Excuse me, I am very flemmy tonight, I apologize. And I'm going to do that right after I take out my silicone brush and my clear gesso and add a little bit of gesso. I am going to cut away from that because it's just me spreading things on with an acrylic brush. Back. My background is dry and it's a little curly, but that's okay. I've also pulled three of my shimmers, Jenny B. Blue, Sunset Strip, and Mango Tango. These are the three I probably use the most, except for Glorious Day. I use that one as well. So, hang on, I got something that fell. Just wanna pick it up before I forget about it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do some mixed media and I'm just going to use the packaging technique and lay some color down so that it matches up along the colors that are in the background piece. So it's probably not going to show so much like over the blue like this piece here but I'm okay with that. It's just going to be like a more of a hint type thing rather than some big Boom! Lots of mixed media. All right, here we go. See, these DVD things are really multi-purpose. I'm using that as uh, for my packaging technique. And I got the blue a little out of where I wanted it, so I'm just using a paper towel to wipe that up. And then wiping off the DVD packagey thing. And I'm going to go ahead and put the Mango Tango down after I use the Jenny B. Blue. Jenny B. Blue is probably my most used shimmers product. I, it, looking at the level of it compared to the others, it's like, oh wow, you use a lot of Jenny B. Blue. Once I get those two down, I'm going to finish it off with Sunset Strip. <clears throat> Excuse me, as I said, I am just a little allergy ridden right now. And I don't know if you can hear that, but my dog is being all shaky shaky. Once I finish the packaging technique, I'm going to go back and mist over the same colors in the same areas as I packaged. And I'm going to wait for a bit for that to dry and pop away and magically come back to it being all dry. Yay me! So I'm starting here putting on some Stampin' Dimensionals, still forgetting that you I do have this giant roll of foam tape when finally I remember, oh yeah, you have a giant roll of foam tape. So what I'm going to do is, I didn't want to waste those and I was concerned I would lose, I would have them lose their stick. So I'm just going to fill in with the foam tape in the areas where there aren't any Stampin' Up! Dimensionals. So this goes on for a little while. Apparently I didn't feel the need to cut away from it. So I will say again, as I said in the beginning of my video, please make sure you go on over and check out Christie's take on this lovely layout by Paige Evans. I will provide a link either to her channel or to the video if I actually manage it in the description box below. I am super excited to see what Christie did with this because, you know, we, it's so funny how we can start off with the same layout or the same sketch in later on and just end up into completely different places and it's super cool to see. And now I'm going to go ahead and get it lined up where I want and I love how the top doesn't have any ink but the bottom does. It's super super cool. And I'm like oh yes you know what you need to ink up all these edges because that would look a little odd. 
So once I start doing that, I do believe I'm going to cut away. But I'm just inking up and inking up and, uh, oh, yes, there we go. I am putting on the last one and I am all set and it looks fabulous. I was super pleased with the way this turned out. Uh, and it, like I said, it was time consuming, but it actually did not take it did not take as much time as I thought it would. I'm going to take my photo now and I'm going to mat it with this floral paper and then I am going to mat it again once I ink that edge up with my and I believe that's the hickory smoke ink uh, that is the the Ranger Tim Holtz distress inks that I use quite often. And I'm going to go ahead and ink the second mat up and I am going to partially use ATG and partially use some foam tape. Basically the parts of the photo that aren't under the parts that are the triangles that are popped up, I'm going to add foam tape to and then I'm going to use I don't even know if I actually add regular glue or if I just let it be held down by the foam tape. I'll be totally honest. We'll see. <laughs> it looks like I just used that. So now I'm going ahead and oh, I'm adding a little bit of extra glue because that one kept popping up. And now I'm seeing, oh, someone apparently whacked my tripod. I apologize. Xanthi likes to attack the bottom of my tripod and she most likes to do it when I'm actually filming because she's a sweet cat like that. So now what I'm doing is I've decided to look at the embellishment clusters that are in the original layout and I'm going to use a two inch circle punch and punch out some of these circles from the 12 by 12 papers and I'm just going to tuck those behind different triangles and I'm trying to choose like in that upper left hand corner there isn't a lot of pink so I choose a pink circle and then in I do the same or I decide to move that down and then I, I'm sorry, I do the same for the lower left hand one and then I choose a multicolor one to tuck behind that blue one over on the right hand side. So I'm going to use the three circles and then I'm going to add a flare to each of those. Now the one in the upper left hand says all you, the one in the lower left hand has those same swirly flowers that are in the pattern paper and then the one over on the right hand side has uh, sketchy white lines drawn on that hot pink color that's in a couple of the pattern papers. I also pull out that three colored acetate piece that says dream play love and I am going to use this it almost looks like a base to me or a pocket <laughs> like a baseball base that's what the first thing came to my mind and I'm going to use that for my journaling I'm going to glue it just to the right hand side of my photo it's very similar to what Paige did in her layout except I don't believe she did it on a journaling spot I can't remember off the top of my head right now and I'm also going to add these little leaves and I believe that came from the die cut pack. Now I'm going to go ahead and get that main glitter word for, from the thickers that came with the Fancy Free line. And now in Paige's layout, she had it above her photo but because it's so big and also because I've got that big empty space in the center, I decide that's where I'm going to put my title. It just works better with the shape I decided on. I add that little banner that says, I like your smile. And now I'm just getting everything glued down since apparently I didn't do that before. Now the acetate piece, all I'm doing is I'm adding glue on the part where I know it's going to be covered up by both that triangle piece of paper and then the flare as well. I'm going to put the flare over on that just to kind of include it in the embellishment cluster. Now once I get all of that done, I'm going to add just a few little chipboard buttons and a little bit more mist because there isn't enough mixed media going on here people. There isn't enough color. You know, I had to add some more. <laughs> I am going to reinforce the chipboard buttons with some uh, liquid glue that is the scotch 
tacky glue. It used to be called the Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive, but they changed the name. And that is a fine line bottle tip applicator on top of that. So I bought those on Amazon. You can buy just the bottle caps and they fit on the regular tacky glue bottle. And all I do is add a little bit of water. That was at uh, the suggestion of a couple different people. And it works perfectly. It has never dried out on me or like uh, gotten stuck. Oh, one thing I did forget, I grabbed the puffy stickers that came out with a fancy free line. And I do add one floral puffy sticker down at the bottom. I'm just trying to work out where it's going to go. It is going to nestle right beneath that chipboard button down there. And I'm going to go ahead and write my journaling. And the journaling says, all the kids at the whatever the name of the daycare place was had a great time at the park. Uh, they especially enjoyed the parachute, but what's not to love? So, you know, just quick and fun and the park was actually right across the way from the daycare center. So, and then I'm going to finish off my title with the word parachute. And I'm using these October afternoon tile stickers in navy to finish those off. And yeah, I did do them in two rows because I wanted it to nestle in between that Y. And so that's the way it worked. And I actually like the way it looked, turned out. So I'm perfectly fine with it. All right, we are almost finished. Thank you guys so much for joining me here. I do add that little heart die cut in the embellishment cluster over on the right. And then I am going to grab my shimmers in concrete, which is a silvery gray color. And I'm just going to mist that kind of all over my layout once I cover up my photo. As I said, thank you guys so much for joining me here. If you could flick me a thumbs up, that would be super awesome. If you are a subscriber, thanks so much for watching me. And if you're not, please consider subscribing. I try to put out at least two videos a week. And um, all right, guys, that is going to finish my layout off for today. Don't forget to head on over to Christy's channel. And uh, bye, everyone. See you soon. Bye. Woo, we're done. Yay.